Um, a handful. A handful. I try to remember, but I mess it up. And then, <laughs> but uh, but a handful. Yeah, about six or seven, something like that. Are you still working with the the Tuttles on the Orange County Choppers here and there? Yeah, we did the actually the last episode that aired. We were the very beginning of that show was filmed in our shop, which yep. was really cool and. Uh, it was nice because Paul Sr., Mikey, and Junior were all at my place, which was, you know, really cool for me growing up with them and then having them in the shop. It was just, uh, it was cool. It was you know, like a moment, to, you know. You were friends with those, with them for forever, right? Uh, for a while, yeah. Um, we actually were part of the first show. We did a, an episode with them, and uh, that show didn't, you know, didn't come out. And then, you know, but we fished together. We, you know, nice. hung out. It's, it's, it's cool. We're going to let these guys move this table out of the way real cool quick. Relationship. We're about to have some action up here. What on are stage. we doing? What are we doing? We're going to stand and hang out. We're going to get you on the tree racing here in a little bit. Oh, I should have been some... practicing. <laughs> Last year I said I'm going to practice. I forgot about it. I don't know how I would set that up, but... You know what? Uh, later on today, when everything shuts down, we'll just have you come up for a secret yeah, practice. Yeah, you let's and I. do we'll that. Just go ahead. Maybe ahead. I'll come back tomorrow if I mess this one up. So what's going on now in the life of, uh, of Ed? Uh, well, um, you know, we're actually working on some of our own, um, you know, TV, I guess, if you will. And we have a couple things that may go on with a, with a network, but it's a little too soon to talk about. So right now we're just doing our own footage, having fun. I got my, I got, I got Brandon, I got Mel, I got Justin um, in my shop, and we have like a lot of fun. And it's a different. It's like the anti car show, car show. Right. It's not too pretty. We don't have all the nicest tools, but we do some really cool stuff. So it's, uh, it's fun. It's what kind of like what I want to do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Just straight up car stuff. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of times when you, you know, when you deal with a. Uh, a network or you deal with somebody that has a, an idea sometimes it doesn't match your idea right and like I never wanted to get too too far in bed with that so this is like us doing exactly what's really what we would do and it's really the, the, the realest situation uh, a lot of guys out here would probably relate more to it than some of the shows and granted I love them and I've been part of them but when you see a TV show and there's a half a million dollars to build a car, that's just not realistic. So yeah, our shop is realistic. Real like, yeah. We make things happen without the stuff we need to make it happen sometimes. But, you know, it's part of growing, yeah. Speaking of a uh, half million dollar build, SEMA obviously brings out all of the biggest builds, you know, across the world. Have you had time to walk through and look and find anything that you thought was just outstanding? Um... You know what? Yeah, there's been a handful of cars that I've really liked. There was one that really stood out to me, and, and I don't remember it. I don't want to try to come up with it and be wrong, but there's been a handful of cars that are super impressive. That's what I love about being here is you see a lot of uh, unique and different visions. You know, some of the shows you go to, they're not necessarily, you know, like you go to a classic car show, that's all you see. Here you see imports and lifted, and it's just, it's just really good for someone like me to see it because it's it's like fuel you know i come back from sema like recharge Creatively. you know yeah it's yeah. awesome it's it's, a, it's really you got to be here if you're building cars or you're in this community and you're not at sema you're really not doing it right so is there something that you specifically look for when you're looking at cars in there that always kind of stands out for you as a positive or a negative you go well, i don't like this car because they did that wrong and it, is there some part of an aspect of a car that's like it's just got to be perfect for you no you know what it's actually the opposite i like creativity and a little bit of courage to do something different that always that always makes me feel better than i mean like listen i love the super polished cars and everything that's perfect but sometimes you see these rat rods or, or something that's just really uniquely done and you could tell somebody was kind of like it's either going to work <laughs> or it's gonna not like the car we're building for next year it's gonna certainly have people that love it and certainly have people that hate it and that's like my goal but it's like my first real big build with absolute freedom and that's what I when I see some of these vehicles here I could see that the person went out on a limb and when you see it work because when you make that decision to go out in that limb you don't have the guarantee that it's gonna come out the way you hope it does it's right. just like but when you're building a car for SEMA you're too far past the point to make you know change something at the end like if it's a major idea so i like creativity and and courage in and a build. Uh, the fact that you're already talking about your sema build for next year just goes to show what these people put into this because the sema crunch is a real thing yeah and you're already a year ahead what are you working yeah. on getting any secrets you can reveal um, i'm building a camaro that's going to make camaro guys want to shoot me <laughs> uh you know that's the only way i can really say it it's it's um it's gonna be it's gonna kind of be complementary to a couple different years 
But like my thing is like there's some things that maybe don't fit, but I'm gonna make it fit. But it's gonna be abomination. That might be, I think we said that might be the name for it. So, but again, I mean, we're trying to build a SEMA car in a real shop that has to make money. We have bills like everybody else. Um, you know. The, the greatest situation would be just building cars, but that's not my reality. So that's why the, t the footage we're filming with it is really interesting because we're going to try to build a car yeah. for this show that's not making me any money. And sometimes you got to push off the guy. We, yeah, we're really busy. We've got a lot of work coming in. So it's hard to say, hey, let's not take that job and let's work on this. Yeah. So I have to work so many hours, then I'm exhausted, and then i got to you know, find the, the energy to do it. But... The, the love for this one is different because I really am passionate. It took me a while to find something I really wanted to do, yeah. and this is definitely it, yeah. You know, Craig Jackson was up here, and he was talking about having the generational shift in cars that people like and cars that people are after. What generation Camaro are you working on? Because, you know, the 60s, everybody loves those. The 70s, everybody loves those. I grew up in the 80s, you know, with those old IROCs, the, well, the Z28s. I'll, I'll stop you there. So right now at my shop, we have a 67. That's going to be really amazing. Um, mine is, is a second gen. Yeah. But when you see what I'm doing, it's going to complement two parts of that era. And we just did an IROC for a guy. It was a... a um, uh, it was a personal meaning for the car. Yeah. You know, there was some, there was a uh, you know, family attachment to it, and we did this. Um, we took a black eye rock, but we did like a metallic Ford color on it, which you know, not many people. If you know the color, you know it. But it has like a real nice, you know, it's nice. So I like the eye rock. I like the eye rock convertible. Oh yeah, I hit the really lotto. Cool. That's one of my cars next to the Grand National. A nice eye rock convertible. I definitely get my hands on. You know, the thing is, in the '80s, there were a lot of really ugly cars made. But there were some true standouts too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the Fox Body Mustangs. You got the high yeah, rocks. Notch back. Yep. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, all of those. So I mean, it's, at one point you're going to start seeing these '80s cars coming out. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, some of them are still cool, and some of them are still going to be around. So uh, have you been seeing that? You know, you said you had one customer do that. Have you been seeing it start to build that way? Yeah, you see, like, uh, see, my shop's really funny because I have, like, we just did a wide body uh, charger. Uh, a true full body it's not a bolt-on kit it's like the whole body's done and that was a, a you know it's 17 and we have a, a 19 we just took in a 1930 model a oh, wow. so if you look at my shop you go from 1930s to 2020 say you know so it's everything and that's why that's why i appreciate what i do because every day is different yeah and never it's never like i wouldn't want to be the guy that just did this car yeah i like the challenges when we get a movie come to us and they you know we did the ninja turtle van and they come up with something that's just like, you know, and most guys would shy away from it. I'm like, I want that opportunity. So awesome. I look for the oddball stuff. Let's get you on this tree real quick and test uh, your reaction time. Uh, and, uh, I did horrible, I think. Well, I think I did better on the second one last time. That's all right. You get three rounds. We're gonna three see. rounds. Do you okay. remember them? No, I don't. You got to tell me again. All right. We're going to hold it down real quick and you stage. Yeah. And then yeah. when the ambers hit, okay. you pop it off. As soon as I see the ambers, let go. There you go. So. We'll get them both. There we go. Staged up. Oh, I, totally I see you beat me that time. I wasn't I paying you? attention. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to one more time. Uh, Again. You're getting better. 0.109. Is that good? What's the top number? The top oh, number is my God. Matt Hagen. No, he's a drag racer. What are you going to do? Yeah. 0.05. Do they have this I can bring, put in my living room and play with it? We can do that. We can, we can send it home with you. Uh, ah, I got you on that one, 0.067. Uh, that's good, okay. All right, Ed Golden, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, thank you, you very much. It's a pleasure.